So if you guys want, I'm, I'm gonna give you like the breakdown of how to use the equipment first of all. The first thing to acknowledge is that green dot is the axis of rotation. So that means your knee needs to line up with that. Your knee is a hinge joint, it only moves in one direction. So you wanna make sure it's lined up with the hinge of the machine. Um, okay, Kev, go ahead and curl that up. Good, stop right there. So his muscle is short there. That's gonna be really, really hard, right? Acknowledge how these things are moving. Go ahead and come down. So, so let's look at this one first. So right there, if I put a weight on there, go ahead and move through, Kev. Notice how it's coming this way. Axis rotation is here, getting closer to the axis, which means what's happening to the weight? Getting lighter. Go ahead and curl again. Pretty substantial distance change, actually. Go ahead and come down. It's probably like eight inches. That's pretty substantial, but let's look at this one now. So watch how far this one travels and what happens to it. It gets further away from the axis, which means it gets harder. Why would we want that? Maybe we want to challenge it in that short position. So you, want to, you don't want to work. Who, who wants to do some hamstring work? I know bodybuilders, we don't like to work unless we have to. Somebody's getting in there. Now you don't have to do it, man. Hang on. All right. Well, you'll, you'll have a good objective um, outlook. So go ahead and uh, grab the end of the bench just like that. I want you to stay up on your forearms. Actually, so here, you know, I'm going to give you guys the, the over and above. Um, we want to challenge a muscle through its entire range, right? That's important. You guys learned that. So when, go ahead and fall down on your chest. What did Kevin, Kevin just do by falling down onto the machine the way it was designed. Well, yeah, he went into more hip flexion, which means he did what to the hamstrings? So if we know the hamstrings insert on this side of the hip, we lengthen them, right? So our goal here in this, in this particular exercise should be to get the hamstrings maximally shortened. So if I actually shorten them a bit from this end, it may be actually be an opportunity to train them a little, little bit more of a short range. So come up on your forearms, stay up there. So you just change it a little bit. What we're trying to do is almost get him to the point where he's kind of straight across. So if you actually contract your abs a little bit to pull your rib cage down a little bit more. There you go. So you see how the lower back, the arch and the lower back went away? Good. Go ahead and curl it up, Kev. Good. And what I don't want to see, you know, not that this is part of what we're talking about, but I don't want to see any movement in that hip. I don't want it going up and down. So I want you to think about driving those, that pelvis into the pad. Good. Curl up. Good. Now, Kev, tell them where it gets harder. How does it feel there? Actually, hang on, let's change that length. Go. Uh, is it pretty substantial? I want to put him through the death set. What do you guys think? Are you hamstring your strength or weakness, Kev? Oh, here we go. Squeeze those glutes. This might not be, we got quarters around. This might be a little over ambitious. Is your quarters there? Ah, uh, thank you, man. Uh, a couple will be good. Sweet. Come on there, thanks man. <laughs> You're getting fucked up now. <laughs> um, so here's another cool thing guys. Here's another cool thing to realize. If you start overloading the short range, it's actually, now I'm gonna say this and maybe put my foot in my mouth, but it's actually a really good way to warm up um, because he can't physically do that much load in the short position. So you could probably start, I mean that may be too heavy to start, but you could probably start with a relatively heavy load because of your neurological capability and your mechanical capability being relatively low in that short range. You could probably start there without any warm up. And probably by the end of six or eight reps, see a substantial warm up, see a substantial preparedness of the nervous system increase. Go ahead and show me, Kev. So 
So I don't want to see those hips moving. Keep the abs locked down. So stop for a second. So the most important thing, guys, this is nothing to do with the exercise or nothing to do with the machine, but the most important thing you can do in this exercise is think about it like a bicep curl for your hamstrings. From the knee to the hip is driving down as aggressively as possible into that pad and it doesn't move. Go ahead. The first thing we have to do if we want to build the muscle is we have to be able to qualify the, the exercise. I mean, the quality needs to be the same. Otherwise, adding more weight on the, on the machine is useless. So no movement, man. All right, hold on, that's too much weight then. So no swinging. Good. Yeah, no acceleration from the bottom, contract. So even a little, a little slower off the bottom. So why am I saying no acceleration off the bottom? If there's no weight there, you don't want to accelerate through that because that's just going to give you momentum, right? So there's no load there. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hard is that? It's about a six, right? Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Are you getting the set, man? You're not done yet. <laughs> yeah, so this is cardio. <laughs> yeah, hardest at the top. There you go. Don't let those hips come up, man. No hips coming up. You want to build those hamstrings or not? So uh, you'll notice his range starts to get shorter, right? So I'm going to take some load off the bottom, put in a lengthened. Go ahead. As a trainer, I don't even want him to stop moving. I just want to keep going. So as, it, as I notice he can't get it anymore to the short, I'm going to take a load off the short. You should be able to get way up now. Don't cheat. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's go. That's what happens when you're fast twitch. Keep going. There's nothing in the short now. It's all in the length. And go. How heavy does it feel from that length and range? <laughs> Good, man. Great. Good, that's it. Want some more? <laughs> um, so, it's a pretty substantial difference, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, so, it's just an important realization to make that you can do a lot more in one set in a lot less time. Make more efficient use of your, your time, your energy. Do things well. Can actually train the muscle rather than train your ego. Great question. So Kim just asked, if somebody's more advanced, would you have them do a few of them in a row? The answer is, it depends. Everything's progressive. Have them do one, see how they do. If, if they do well, next time you can do two, right? It's all progression, man. Everything in, in training, everyone, you know, everyone knows what progressive overload is. Usually in most people, it's like, well, you got to put more weight on the bar. That's not always the way it looks in hypertrophy, right? You can, you can progress in a number of different ways. We're trying to progress tension, time under tension, a number of different variables. So that would be one means of progression. Adding five more pounds is a means of progression. Adding an extra set, adding a little less rest, is just a means of progression. And you have to be acknowledging of what they're capable of right now. If you're going to put them do one set, they're going to be mangled for three days. They don't need to, but as you say, if they're more advanced, sure. And here's another thing to realize, guys. Just because I showed you this one way to use this equipment, that's one tool. You guys can use it in any way you like, as long as there's a thought process. So most people are gonna come in and probably put it in the wrong place. Teach them, offer them an opportunity to understand why. Here's another thing I wanna say. Good or bad? I don't know, that was my next question. <laughs> good or bad? Depends. Honestly, it's not good or bad. It's just a different type of stimulus, okay? This is gonna be challenging everywhere. What I would say is this is not optimal. This is not an ideal scenario. Why is that not optimal? Because that's an equal amount of load through the entire range. Which is, which is not what your body does. It's like using a dumbbell. It's not what your body does. So the ideal scenario is maybe set one looks like that and you're like, I don't really get it. I want to kind of try to feel how this is. 
go and do another rep. Do like three reps. You guys are gonna be able to watch. Everybody watch closely. Watch it as rep tempo. Do three to six reps, Kev. So look at the first thing you see. What does his range look like? He's not getting anywhere near up. And as he tries to get short, look at his hips. So that means, ah, that's a little bit too heavy in, in the shortened range. So let's try this. Maybe that's a little bit better now, right? That seems like it's a little closer to what he's capable of. As he keeps going, I notice his ranges get shorter and shorter and his hips come up a little bit more. Okay, well now he's not able to go to that short, so I'm gonna take off a little bit of that load and give him more load where he still has the ability to do work and take away from where he can't do work, right? So we're just extending your body's ability to do work. If you still have the ability to move it an inch, you can still do work, but just make sure it's the right muscle doing the work and not a full body dry heave, right? Questions? I love that question. Progression. I have no idea, because everybody's different. Um, but I would say, whatever it is, you've got your notebook, write it down and remember it. And next time, do something different. Do something that challenges you a little bit more. And what, are you, what can you challenge? You can challenge load. You can challenge time, so time in the set. You can challenge time from a rest perspective, right? You can challenge volume, how many rep sets. So you have many different opportunities of challenge in front of you. And I don't know the answer. It's anyone. Um, but the answer is you would need substantially less than a typical leg curl because you're challenging it so much through the entire range, right? So the suggestion is maybe a third of what you would normally otherwise do. So when I used to do legs, for me to do a true leg workout, two hours, two hours and 15 minutes, I cut it down to almost 50 minutes because I was just like, there's no wasted reps. There's no more, like, I, once you learn how to use it, it's just like challenge, 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 right? And then get the hell out. Rather than, ah, oh, this feels good, this doesn't feel good, this is really easy here, really hard there. Before, I had to do three exercises to do, to train my quads, or four, and now I can cut it down to do two, right?